Namaste. So now that it is fairly clear that what is stopping my marriage is my YouTube channel, the latest of the aspersions cast on me because my mother complained and then the mother of a boy and alliance we were seeking complained and uh, uh, etc. Mm. So I'm going to stop it and become the good girl. What is really funny is I am probably one of the goodest of the girls, very quiet and uh, very uninterfering and very uh, and live with a lot of crazy people and let them live their lives. Mm. And I do so little activity in the world. I don't really do anything much other than run my guest house. I don't, yeah. So this is all, I think my only contribution to the human society uh, is the YouTube channel because there is a certain, if, there, if I see injustice, and I do because I, I am sensitive, I'm at least able to raise it. But I think outside of this, my interference with generally life in general on the human scale is very little. I think I do much more for plants and animals than I do with people. Mm. It's interesting that I am considered some kind of a rebel in a very arrogant community in general. Tamil Nadu, it's itself a very arrogant society. The people here are quiet, uh, confrontational, uh, disinterested in helping or serving others in any way because they say they think any form of service is uh, uh, is a, a lowering of their respect. And uh, other than the, uh, uh, my slight experience in the Nilagiris uh, around Kodai Road, the Nilagiris, uh, where in, in indeed it seems the people, especially in the Kodai Road uh, junction, it seems the people there somehow do still have an idea of uh, a service somehow, like uh, when they hand out the plastic bags, they put stuff and they hand it over like this for you to catch it which is a very sensitive thing to do. Uh, uh, yeah, other than the Nilagiris, and maybe I've heard some nice things about Coimbatore, but I haven't been to that belt. The rest of the state uh, uh, reminds me of living with monkeys. Yeah, pretty much actually. Um, and, and, I mean, it, it, I don't have a judgment value there, meaning I, I love monkeys, right? I like animals quite a lot. I even give them homeopathy medicines. It's just, I mean, the behavior, the, the, the unnecessary fights, the, the, in, the internal rage, these kind of things. And then if I expand it to larger, larger India, again, you know, my experience in Maharashtra, Goa, very uncultured. The people there are, yes, forthright, open, but the sort of sweetness and softness of humans being together, that is not there. Um, I, I, I don't see, I don't, uh, maybe older Varanasi, the older, older style Varanasi, maybe yes, uh, but uh, too much poverty on the eastern side. I think one has to go all the way to Nepal. Again, same. I think there is some idea of nice culture, cult being cultured, softness, sweetness in people in, in Uttar Pradesh, in Nepal, all of that. Uh, but, but I think it's a very broken society in terms of poverty there. And I don't know how much of that sweetness can stay despite the uh, real difficulties of life. Mm. So then, yeah, so that's the funny part. I think I'm one of the mildest people and need a very harmonious environment usually to uh, have a peaceful day. And then my YouTube channel makes me into this uh, Durga ji, goddess Durga, yeah, on the nice half and on the other, uh, on the and on the da, I mean, on the opposite side of being nice, then I, I suppose I resemble one of these witches, these screeching banshees. Anyway.
I think I like the idea of being a screeching banshee, yeah? Yeah, I think I quite like that. Um, so I want to talk today about uh, the insidious uh, mosque noises, mosque sounds, mosque prayer calls. Um, so what happened was around March this year, suddenly there, there came up a mosque in our neighborhood. Uh, the, the building didn't look like a mosque, we didn't know a mosque was being built and suddenly they had the little, the towers up in the building and then the microphones got on the towers and they started to blare prayer sounds. Now in India it's illegal to have any kind of noises before 6 a.m. and after 10 p.m. So the earliest mosque prayer call starts at 4.40 a.m. and so that's definitely illegal. So when, when and also that in neighborhoods, there's also illegal to build mosques in residential neighborhoods. It's simply illegal and, uh, and you, you need prior permission. But also I think it's just illegal because we, there was a supreme, there was a judge who was talking about it yesterday and he was mentioning it was illegal. Um, and uh, yeah. So then I just didn't like noise. That was my biggest complaint. I didn't mind that there were Muslim people praying in the neighborhood, but to have them force themselves on my time and make me listen to their prayer calls was too much for me. And so I did, I actually called up the police and told them, look, I mean, this suddenly has come up and you'll have to help me negotiate them on their timings and on the no and the loudness of their microphones. So the police told me that they went and spoke to them. I, I called them on the 100 number. I went and spoke to them and they had uh, told them that it's only during Ramadan, which was happening then. And after Ramadan, this wouldn't happen. Either the really loud, loud speakers uh, and the early morning call wouldn't happen is what they told the police. So then I let it go at that and, uh, and then I waited till the Ramadan finished. Did the mosque stop its prayer calls? No, it didn't. Or the early morning call? No, it didn't. So this has continued for months together now and it's uh, now six months later and I'm still being forced to wake up every morning with the blaring uh, noise from the mosque. So usually in countries like East Asia, Southeast Asia, 60 residents around the building have to sign and uh, accept that they are Muslims and they want this mosque and then the mosque can be built because there's an idea of but here the, it's opposite you build a mosque and then you try to bringing people into the area that's just not working because what about the residents earlier we aren't really particularly uh, disliking the religion mind you we just don't want to be disturbed it's our residential neighborhood we have some rights over uh, what we choose to hear here we, we have a right to quietness etc et which is our concern so they should take our opinion you know before they uh, raise a noise making structure and uh, yeah and if they, there is indeed a Muslim community then they should get all of the residents to play, find a place to live together in and then create something within that community for them so that the community needs are met. Here I don't see why people from other religions ha have to be forced to listen to prayer calls of another religion in a language which, which, which we don't understand which is Arabic right. And I don't know where all the Tamil saviors have gone now, yeah? Why don't they choose and ask them to change the language of the call? But then that would really trigger it, right? If, they, if the language of the call makes the Tamil people understand that they are saying that Allah, O oh Akbar, Allah is the only God and there is no other God, then uh, that would piss off quite a lot more uh, residents in the area, the Hindus and the Christians. So, um, yeah, so what has happened is uh, later on now, so now what happened is not just earlier, they just played it for a minute, right? Quickly, they did the call and went. But now that they haven't had any resistance, the call goes on for three, four minutes. So I'm forced to listen to more and more of the loud prayer calls five times a day. It's really annoying, really annoying. So then you know people don't i've spoken to people one on one about this at the temple the neighbor both the neighbors etc but in general people don't want to interfere because they they are afraid of standing up to the islamic religion 
they think that Islamic people group together and will be violent against them. So the people in general don't want to raise voice as individuals. So this is what happens when I spoke to one or two of them individually, including my neighbor, who's just building a house and he also has a similar problem. Mm. So then I spoke to the tem uh, panchayat, the, the local fishing village and the panchayat of the village. And they also went and talked to these people and asked them for permits and etc, etc. So the, the, the panchayat people went and did show some resistance, but it look, but the panchayat people in general, you know, they are poorer, much poorer. They are fishing or they're driving taxis or renting their homes, etc. And uh, I'd, for them, it may not be such a pressing issue because at their, uh, at the, I suppose their socio-economic worries are more important for them than having a quiet neighborhood. And they probably don't have a quiet neighborhood anyway because they live uh, in much more closely built homes. It's the fishing village, village community. Now, of course, it's not huts, it's cement structures, but still there are many more people living together. So the idea of space and idea of silence may not be as uh, for them, uh, devil, I mean, uh, developed, no, but I'm saying it would be different for them as for the more middle class, upper middle class, rich people who live in the rest of the neighborhood. But they are, have a, and how, and how it is in India is they have a community. The poorer people, the poorer residents in my Nilangare neighborhood have their community. They have a panchayat, they, they work together, they take care of the local temple, etc. Whereas the middle, upper to upper, upper uh, rich classes, they are typically uh, uh, individualistic, don't really come together. There are, there are a couple of associations, but religion wouldn't be a part of that association and uh, they wouldn't really come together as much as would the poorer, poorer section of society. So these people, the middle class, I spoke to that association person, so she said you are the only person who complains. Then I kind of gave it up because uh, uh, I don't want to be pointed out as the only bigoted uh, freak in, in this locality. Um, but um, yeah, but yesterday, interestingly, I had a talk with a more, one of the rich, richer people had had her uh, a haven, uh, a puja, not a puja, was it? Homam. What is homam in English? Fire ritual in their home, uh, which because it was the big puja of the Devi yesterday, it was the Durga Puja day. And uh, then I just walked in because, you know, they had, they had done the fire ritual. And so then bang, I went into the uh, upper class, supposedly. Indian society and I didn't like it. I, I found them the same. I found them arrogant and uh, yeah, I can see, I can see why the th rest of India is like this. What happens is the rich, the people who are privileged give across such vibes of they are greater than God. Hmm? And so the poor think that if they have money, they should become like that. Now just imagine if the rich were humble, what a lovely society we should have. Yeah. Yeah, rich becoming humble. I think that's almost as difficult to do as getting the moist mosque noise down. So then these people agree agree they're having a problem when I told them about the noise and they said they should they will do something. So I hope they do something. But I just want to share my frustration about the uh in so do mosque prayer calls, right? They are just in the places they shouldn't be, not really considering residents' opinion, etc., um, etc. Et and then if we raise our voice about it, then we become these uh, Hindu fanatics, which is just, I think, unfair. We just want a peaceful life.